Right, hello everyone, this is Red Matt and welcome back to another F1 23 video on One Hub Racing Season 24, round number 6. Um, I'm going to apologise for the late upload here, as you can see my uh, setup I'm setting on because it's a wet sprint race. Um, I edited this video um, about one, two days ago and uh, I've just not got around to uh, doing a voiceover because every time I come back from work it's been late at night. And I've not been able to be my vocal self, so um, as you can see, yeah, let's go straight into the video here and say I'm putting my brake bias towards the front because in the wet, um, I always found myself losing the rear by mashing oh, the brakes. sugar, yeah, really I'm all the way back here. Hard, but, um, yeah, I said hard. But as we wait for the five lights, so where we go, we get an all right start here, but with me starting further down the back of the rear because it's reverse grids, while sprint racing in one hub, we... Um, didn't get the best of starts, so I was taking it with caution to turn whilst my teammate decides to do some initial D deja vu malarkey into turn one, but it gives us two positions there, and as you can see now my championship rival, Axelot, right behind me, sending it down the inside, forcing me <laughs> to outbreak myself, almost losing it under braking, and to be honest with you, that was a bit harsh for me on Berry. To force him off, but if I didn't do that, I would have been spun by Axelot. But um, Barry was on the intermediate, which was audacious, to say the least. But um, we've seen later in the race, he was just dropping like a fly as I almost get collected by a little pile up. I think my teammate was involved in that as well. Um, can't remember from this little small preview playing. It's like, a, as you say, I've edited this, and to be honest with you, I can't remember what I've edited of this. Uh, now on lap number two now, on the back of Lawrence, who doesn't get the best of exit out of turn one. And I see this as an opportunity to go and grab him into... I still technically don't see this as a corner, but... Nope, the track map says as wise to turn two into turn three, as Miami's also trying to make a move on Tristian. And they didn't make that move, but trying to put the power down out of here out of exit at turn three was horrific. As you can tell here, I was trying so hard to defend from Lawrence here, as I knew I needed to make up the positions as soon as possible. So he's still down my inside, but I get quite good traction on the exit here. So does he. But because of me having the inside line and almost going <laughs> to the back of Miami there, as I lock the rears, even on 58% brake bias. And uh, Lawrence, to be fair to him, backed out. And if he didn't do that, it would have been a bit of a question. So it's a bit aggressive for me, to be honest with you. So as you can hear there, Miami has minor front wing damage and because of that mistake from Tristian earlier, it put me off well, massively and Axelot tried to capitalise on that by going down my inside and he couldn't put the throttle down in time. But as I know now, Miami in front has front wing damage. So now I know I need to get past him as soon as possible as Tristian loses the rear end by putting the throttle on the curb. So I knew at this point I had to get rid of Miami as soon as possible. So I go down the inside, try to leave him as much room as possible. But not too much room. So he gets a good exit. And uh, yeah, that's me now up into P3. Last three from 12, was it? Now this bit here, it's, it's Quinn here. Me. Trying to get onto the back of him. He was actually having quite solid pace around here. And like every time I tried to overtake him, he seemed to have a good exit. It was quite frustrating to get by, I won't lie. And as you can tell here, he must have been using the ERS because he started putting away a bit here, but I had plenty of ERS to use. I think about going down the inside. And then he braked quite a bit early, actually, here. So I take this opportunity to go down the inside, giving him room, actually. Just tries to get a good exit out of here. And there's me mashing the ERS, trying to get in front of him. Personally, I thought it was trying to hold me up to help his teammate Axelot here. Right down the inside line. He tries to stick it round the outside, but my car more further ahead, I slowly squeeze him out of track. And, um, yeah, I thought, you know what, I was trying to get an adjusting, but look, he's 7.5 seconds ahead. He he was just in a different league today, was um, Justin. Honestly, like, I don't understand how he was so far down in the driver's standings, if I'm honest with you, because he was rapid around here, and you'll see later on in the race, he he was just rapid. No one could keep up with him. 
Um, so it's my teammate down there in sixth place. And another solid race for the Haas team. And now as we go to the race, it's now fully dry. Because of One Hub Racing, they have their custom uh, weather this season. Uh, so you know what weather the race is going to be like on the day of the race. So it allows some people to prepare, which is a nice touch. One Hub always like to try new things, and I respect them for that. Um, this is the only league, again, I only race in as well, because I was slowly wanting to retire from league racing, but um, Nick from One Hub dragged me back in. And uh, I'm glad he did. So um, now for the race, 36 laps. Can we get a good start here? We do indeed. It was an amazing start. Justin tried to squeeze me to the right, but it was too late. And that's me up into first place. Now, what I was mindsetting now, if I remember now, I was trying to break the DRS. Look, we've been trying to break the slipstream. I also tried to break away from Axelok, so hopefully Justin Axelok could battle away here. I always try and repeat the strategy I did at Austria. Absolutely push like mad on the first two laps using a bit of my battery as well. As you can tell here, the la end of lap one, nine tenths clear. So Justin is using his ERS to try and keep up because he knows I've broken the DRS. I took a bit too much curve in the inside line there. I lost the rear end a bit. I lost a bit of time there. Oh, Seven dunk, as you can see here now. Axelock now trying to challenge Justin. Sends it down the inside here. I was judging by what I can see in the mirrors of the car. And uh, yeah, because of Axelock and Justin break, uh, battling, um, it allowed me to break the DRS. So I saw this as an opportunity to push a bit here. And hopefully, Axelock used a bit of his battery when battling Justin. And as you can tell here, the end of lap two. I'm 1.1 seconds clear. I've done what I needed to do, but I did a rookie error here. Took too much inside curb, beached it on the sausage curb, and that's allowed Axelock now to be within a second, and now he has DRS. And uh, because of all the battery I've burnt now, I've left myself into a bit of a situation here. 30% um, battery, um, Axelock now with DRS. And I'm assuming plenty of ERS as well, unless he's used a lot to uh, gain towards me. We'll never know unless we see his POV, which I don't think he uploads his POV. But if he does, uh, let me know if you are watching. That's a lot. And now on to lap five. Now he's three tenths behind me. And I must admit, I was starting to feel the pressure a bit here now. Um, so three tenths here. He's going to have DRS. He's going to get me here through turns two into turns three here as he looks to go round the outside here but I was a bit crafty here I broke a bit early here because you can see the DRS detection line there he got me round the outside so he was thinking oh I'll be in front here now but now I've got DRS so I'm going to use a bit of my battery try and get in front of him again and hold him up for just that extra bit longer and as you can see there Justin and Miami to be fair the, the, the magic of Austria really is the grid is so closely packed anyone could win it really um, as you can tell, my rear tyres now are really, really screaming now. I was just struggling to even put the power down at the last corner here. Um, I tried to go a bit defensive here because I had a feeling like Sock was going to send it down the inside. And <laughs> As you can see there, my rear end was all over the bloody show. And uh, I'm going to be absolutely swamped here by Axelok and Justin here because Axelok learned from the previous lap. And when I broke early to get the DRS, he's learned this now. He's got the DRS now. He's going to romp away now into first place. But I've got to keep my head cool here. There's still a long way to go in the race. It's Justin here now also sees an opportunity. He goes down the inside. And uh, I just had nothing to answer. Tried to get the throttle down. Tried to go down this inside. And uh, no. Just didn't have the pace now. So now really it's just to uh, keep on the back of them. And save a bit of battery if I can. I'm just trying to follow now Justin and Axelot along with the races. Miami behind goes into the pits to try and get the undercut, which you'll see later on. Justin also responds. But before that happens, Justin is now all there, over the it? back of Axelot. He's going to go around the outside, and just Axelot didn't have an answer for it. Justin was just on a different league today. Is Axelot. That was a bit risky, Axelot. Ooh. Sent it down the inside, as you can see by my reaction, and I generally thought he had front wing damage. Um, somehow he didn't. 
So very, very lucky there. It was a bit rash, unless he was just trying to send down the inside because he outbroke himself. I, I don't know. That's a question I'm yet to really ask him here because this race was on like three or four weeks ago. Um, hopefully when the season starts up again, I'll be consistent with my uploads. As Axe, uh, Axe Lock goes into pits. Justin goes into the pits to cover off Miami from doing the undercutters. Now as you can see, the soft tyres are now gone, and especially it's now on the mediums. It's all over my gearbox here. On to lap nine. Now in the lap nine, I'm pitting now to go onto a set of the medium tyres. My teammate Kamke stays out to stay on the back of Specialist, hopefully stays within his DRS. Um, in a very interesting race so far, it's basically, if you're out of the DRS train, you're going to struggle. Um, you could see that at the end of lap four, five. But those who just weren't in the DRS just were struggling to keep up. Now, uh, Luca here, who pitted about two laps ago, is now in front of us now, but what you'll see later on is his tyres drop off. You can tell the drop off. It just drops massively. I'm trying to think of words on the top of my head here, so I apologise if I'm waffling on here, but Ali B here um, on the fresh set of softs. I didn't bother really trying to fight him much here, really, because he was on the fresh set of soft tyres. He's got more grip at the moment, so I thought it would be the best opportunity to just follow him. And when he's cutting through the traffic, I can cut through with him. But here he makes a mistake. He clips the curb here, almost losing the rear end. And I had to go down the inside. And now, the situation we have now, luckily I've saved a bit of battery. Okay, We're out of the DRS of Luki in front. So now, me trying to let Ali be through has now cost me to burn my battery to try and get back into the DRS. And then there's me hoping Luki and Axelok battle a bit here so I can try and get back into the DRS and again no we're not in the DRS we're just a tenth shy and uh, Ali B I'm surprised he didn't um, try and overtake me again really and just catch him back up again but um, yeah it wasn't the case onto lap 12 into lap 13 now we're now back in the DRS of Luki which is crucial for my race here it allows me to save the battery a bit and Cam Rules has retired from the race here and uh, I think he's retired on track. I don't think he's actually retired, like crashed. I think he's generally just retired on track, which is a no-go on okay, one of the racing. Um, and the virtual safety cars deployed now, which is quite crucial for me. For um, I was thinking about pitting. But I believe when I approached the pits, the search or safety car was ending. It allowed me to save my battery a bit there. But what you'll see here, Cam benefited massively from this VSC as it neutralizes the race. And now I sort of used, well, not used him, but like worked as a team um, to cut through the track a bit here. Because every time he had the fresher tires, tried to battle with uh, someone in front of me. Okay, he'd leave the car he was battling with a poor exit. So you'll see later on in the race as Luki still stuck behind Miami as Axelok. I don't know when that happened. Got into P2. As you look behind, um, Cam has made the move to P6. And Miami almost lost the rear. Well saved there as Luki now sees an opportunity. And goes down the inside of Miami in contact again. In the same corners. Drivers just don't seem to like going side by side. Into turn four here. You can see here, the bottom right, my engine's 134 degrees. I was trying to cool the engine off here a bit here. And um, yeah, Cam has a lot more pace than me on the fresher tyres. I just decided to let him go. As you can see now, he's got an amazing exit. He's already heading towards the back of Luki. Could go around the outside, but not close enough yet. And we'll have to wait until the next lap until he sees an opportunity. Onto lap 18 now. He's looking around, going around the outside. That turn number three. Again, I'm in P6. No threat here because I know how close the pack is. But Luki actually uh, forces Kamke a little bit wide here. But because of all the battery I've saved up, I saw an opportunity to look going around the outside of Luki here. And his tyres are uh, two laps older than mine. And I knew I had a bit more grip than him. Nice work, He's still That's stuck it down the inside here because I've got the inside line into turn and number five 
He allowed me now to try and gain on Miami and progress up the pack, but without holding up Cam K too much because of him on the fresh attire and was being in the same team. Uh, you don't want to lose time just battling. Your teammate when you know he's going to be quicker. Although he's actually quite getting close to me in the championship. Well, he's like P3, I think, in the championship. I'm not really battling him too hard because I'll be losing more time than I would be gaining. And again, I know he's on the fresher tyres and Axelok isn't that far away. And Justin is still controlling the race from his undercut earlier on. As you can tell here on lap number 20, I turned the DRS off. As I know Cam K has got more pace than me and I'll let him by so he can go and attack Miami and Axelot with me hopefully sticking on at the back of his gearbox. Lap 21 now as you can see now he's going for the overtake on Miami. He's going down the inside here. Didn't quite make the move stick but now he's going to try and go around the outside of turn number 5. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, I was struggling a bit here with the tyres. Um, Ali B is now pitted to go onto a set of medium tyres as our soft tyres have dropped off. As Cam K has made a little mistake here, um, but not close enough to sort of capitalise on the mistake as Miami has gone to an overtake on Axe Lock. And you what you see there in top left, Axe Lock has a three second time penalty. And Axelot now is in a bit of bother now because he's going to have Cam K all over the back of him now. He's dropping like a stone. I found with Axelot, when the tyre drop-off happened, he was struggling massively. And this isn't like Axelot. So unless he's gone a bit aggressive with the setup, that's all I can think of. But at the moment, my priority is where Axelot finishes with him being my main championship rival. Now to end lap 24 now. And it's me considering going into the pit. So I'm going to do Go the on, quick Cam. opposite to what these three cars in front do. Because I know I do have the pace. But I've just been sort of sitting back, seeing what happens here as we go now into the pits. End of lap 24. There's no rules for one hub racing because in other leagues, you'd have to stay between the white lines when going into the pits. Uh, the stewards at One Hub Racing thought it was deemed unsafe to slowing down massively on the apex of a corner. Which I agree. Um, because the amount of times a driver slowed down quite a bit to go into the pits, it's caused okay, evasive well, action yes, right, and just complete, a complete crew, mess, basically. No but, um, I'm hoping they'll come out to pits on the fresh set of softs in front of Ali B, but unfortunately, he's now come out ahead of me. But however, we are on a fresh set of soft tyres. And later on to the same lap, on my out lap, I'm all over the back of Ali B here. And if I was being brave enough, I would have sent it down the inside. But again, we've got 10 laps of the race to go. We've got plenty of time to try and overtake him here. But my rivals are now in the pits. And I had to make this move now. I didn't think I'd ever make a DRS move down the, main, down the straight here, really. Um, now, as you can see here, that's Justin. That's the leader there. So I saw this as an opportunity to try and go for the move here, trying to get him to the lead into turn three. Not quite close enough to get a good exit at turn three, but as you can see there, Ali B has completely outbroke himself and gone straight into the back. And I generally thought I had rear wing damage here, but we'll go back onto that later on. But um, what I was trying to do is get a good exit out of turn three to get him into turn four, but that little contact in the back. Um did mess up my exit a little bit and uh, unfortunately Ali B was having a solid race had front wing damage um, and now he's had to uh, retire from the race because when he pit pitted he would have um, yeah would have been near the back but with one hub racing if you finish the race you get a point no matter what so I don't understand really why he's retired I understand it's very frustrating and it was a mistake but those points could be the reason you finish 8th or ninth. so it was crucial, you just finished the race, even if you have a terrible race, the car's got floor damage or whatever, you want to finish the race, because those two points could be the reason you either, again, finish 6th or 5th, so, yeah, and uh, lap 28, you can see there, Quinn has crashed at the start of sector 3, and on a surprise, a safety car was not pulled out there, but 
you see on the preview now here. I was struggling to keep up with Justin now. Um, I was trying so hard to sort of keep within him but not burn my ERS. Um, yeah, he just had so much pace, especially through the start of Sector 3. I actually had to end up starting to use my battery to keep within the DRS. Um, and then what you can see here now, I'm out of his DRS. And because I'm out of his DRS now, I struggled to even get back within the DRS because now the soft tires were dropping. Um, yeah, okay, I picked the lap earlier, but I didn't expect the softs to drop as much as they did. And um, yeah, now I just sort of realised in the back of my mind, I have to set up a second place here now. The, there's not a chance now I'm going to be able to catch up to Justin now. So now more it was just a case of holding position now. But as you can see behind me, Axlock and Cam K are battling, but um, crucial moment in the championship here, as you can see, okay, Axelok has left the session. No. Axelok has lost connection. Axelok. You can see by my reaction. That is unbelievable. He's going to be... Oh, no. That was quite good for him. But it's allowed... Oh, Axelok. <laughs> It's allowed Cam K now to go into third place, and it's going to be a fantastic result for Haas. Um, Miami with a three-second time penalty, but I've seen that before in league races where a penalty has been removed because the driver's been battling, gone off the track to take evasive action, and uh, got the penalty removed. So I wasn't taking the chances. I was holding back to help Cam have some DRS and protect him from the drivers behind. I almost lost the rear end there. That would have been embarrassing, but nice little weave earlier to, just to let Cam K know that I'm there to help him. And uh, Justin, from the start of the Austrian weekend, he was just in a different league. Um, yeah, and it makes me wonder, what on earth is he doing that far down the standings? He was, he was a great driver, and he seems to have a great setup. Um, Justin, if you let me know what your setup is, and I want to give it a go, please do, but... Um, yeah, Jesus. Uh, 22 minutes into the video, and I've been waffling along for that long. I don't even remember what I've been saying, if I'm honest with you. But, um, yeah, great weekend for Justin. And, uh, again, another great weekend for me, but with Axelok, such a shame him losing connection. But um, at least he still finished with some points and actually finished the race. But uh, P2, P3 for Haas, it's a great result for us. Um, nice to see me and Cam on the podium. But uh, typical sight in F1 now, seeing the Dutch flag on the top step. But uh, luckily, we don't see it that much in one hub racing. <laughs> no offence to Dutch fans and Max Verstappen, but um, your anthem reminds me of Christmas Street. Uh yeah, so uh, it was quite an entertaining Austrian race. I know the race, from my perspective, didn't look that entertaining, but more for me, it was just to keep within the DRS, uh, save the battery, and then attack when it suited best. But then, as you can see here, Justin in first, and uh, me and Cam K in third, and Axelok finished down in seventh place. Um, so more points gained on the championship. Um, yeah, I'd say that was a successful weekend, and the next race for us is uh, Italy. So until then, see you next time.